Um, hi, my name is Gabby, and my STEM fair project is on proving Higgs theorem for lattice polygons. And you're probably wondering what a lattice polygon is. Uh, lattice polygon is a polygon whose vertices lie in the plane that have integral coordinates uh, versus a normal polygon, which is a plane shape which is two-dimensional with straight sides. And so basically, if you use a geoboard, for example, um, like over here, I have one. And uh, this is a lattice polygon because, as you can see, each of the points lie on one nail. But if you were going to turn this into a normal polygon, it would mean that one of these or several would lie um, in between the nails, which you can't really do on a geo board. So as you can see, I've now written Hicks equation for his theorem on the board. Um, I will now explain what the theorem actually means. So since this is for lattice polygons, A stands for the area of the lattice polygon. Oops, and I spelled lattice wrong. Area. I stands for the interior um, interior points. They stand for the interior points. And B stands for the border points, which if you look on the geoboard once again, you can see that these are the interior points. Well, just these ones actually. And um, the ones that are um, touching the blue are the border points. And so to prove this theory works, I will now count both the interior and the border points and show you how to do the theorem. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six interior points. So I will write A equals six plus. Now we count the border points which are again the ones touching the plate, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. So now we write 8 over 2. And minus 1. Okay, so now we can start the actual math part. So we need to simplify what 8 halves is. So you divide 8 by 2, which is 4 minus 1. So A equals 6 plus 4 minus 1 equals 3. So A equals 6 plus 3. A then equals 9. Start to again. prove Pick's theorem, I will now outline the shapes that make up this lattice polygon. And the only shapes that actually make up a lattice polygon are triangles and squares. So as you can see, here is a big square, Oops. here is a, another tri oops, triangle, well one triangle. Another triangle. Another triangle. And one more triangle. And this got kind of messed up, didn't it? Oh no, there we go. There's another triangle. And yet another triangle, as you can see here. Aha! More triangles. So now we need to find the area of all of the squares and all of the triangles. 
And if you don't know, I will write the equations for finding the area of a triangle and the area of a square. I guess I should do that. I'll write it on the other side. Okay. Area of a square is equal to base times height. Area of a triangle is equal to base times height divided by 2. So now, to make it easier, why don't we label all of the different triangles we have since there are very many. Let me grab a marker. Okay. So here we have 1, 2, 3, oops, 4, 5, and 6. And then we have one square, which we don't really need to label. Okay, so let's solve the area for number 1. And since triangle is a triangle, we'll label it like that. Okay, so... The height is one. No, base no. two. So base is two, and the height is one. Divided by two is equal to two over two, which is equal to one. Okay, now let's find the area of triangle number two. Now triangle two is also uh, the base has 2 and the height has 1. So it'll be the exact same math problem. So 2 times 1 over 2 is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Now for triangle 3. Now this triangle is 1 base, 1 height. One, one base, one height. So that means it'll be one times one over two, which is equal to one over two, which is equal to one half. Now for triangle four. Yeah. Now this triangle, the base is two, and the height is 1 again. So 2 times 1 over 2 is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Now we have two more triangles left. So we will now find the area of triangle 5. Now triangle 5 has a base of 1 and a height of 1. So that again is the same as triangle 3. So 1 times 1 over 2 is equal to 1 half. Now triangle 6 is just like triangle 4, which is a base of 2 and a height of 1. So triangle 6, base of 2, height of 1, divided by 2 is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Now we need to find the square. So like a rectangle, but you get the idea. Okay, now the square is 2 by 2. And since square is easy and it's 2 times 2, or base times side, that means it's 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Now we just add up all of the areas, and it should equal 9, which is what we got with Pig's Theorem. So let's see. I'll do it over on this board because there's not enough room on that. We've got triangle 1, triangle 2, plus 1. Triangle 3 is 1 half, plus 1. F. Triangle 4 is 1 plus 1. 
triangle 5 is 1 half, 1 half, triangle 6 is 1. So let's add that all the triangles up first before we introduce the square. So I'm going to add the two one halves, which is equal to one. So that's one. So now we have one plus one plus one plus one plus one, which is equal to one, two, three, four, five. Five. Now if we add the area of the square, which is four, so five plus four is equal to nine, which is the same answer we got with Hick's equation. So as you can see, Hick's theorem is correct. Uh, my name is Gabby and I'm from Beehive Academy and thank you for watching.